Hey, welcome to SmartHelping.com. I've got a new financial model upgrade on the dry cleaning services five-year financial model. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like the video. So, <clears throat> as you know, I've been upgrading all my startup models. This is the one I just finished this week. I've added a three-statement model, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement, all linked. I've added a cap table. We've added a terminal value. We've added a, a whole global control set. This wasn't here before in the original. So tons of upgrades. I mean, I also redid the entire revenue logic to make it way more uh, nuanced and also better in general. We've also got sanity checks here for, for revenue assumptions. So a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, the model's completely better than it was uh, before. And that's all I'm trying to do here is, is, is make great models. Uh, so let's go through it. I'll go through each tab, explain what's going on, how it works, and uh, you'll you'll understand how to use it. It will be a one-time fee of forty-five dollars to buy the template. Link in the description box below. <clears throat> so first tab, global control. This is where you're defining some high-level assumptions about the name of the company. That'll flow over to the income statement uh, or the financial statements at the top there. You've also got the launch year where you hard code in the year, whatever that is, you can put in any year. And that will affect any drop down that's referencing the the, te, uh, the model. Oh, and I misspoke. This is a 10 year model, not a five year. So you can go up to, you can let the model run for any amount of time from one to 10 years. And you can control that with the drop down. You can also control if you want to include the terminal value or not. This is mainly for a proper discounted cash flow analysis. And so if you do include terminal value, you can put the EBITDA multiple and this model uses EBITDA multiple to determine um, based on the 12 month or the, the, the year of exit, the EBITDA in that year times this multiple gives you the exit value. Uh, no, all the assumptions I have in here now are arbitrary. When you go in and fill this out, you can fill in your own data with your own research and own uh, justifications. Um, cash sources, debt funding, this is if you're going to get traditional financing and this will flow to, through to an amortization schedule. Also note, if you include terminal value here as yes, then any debt remaining at the end of the um, forecasted period will be repaid. Any remaining equity is then populated right here. And this is what the model solves for based on any burn and startup costs. This is the initial equity requirement. And that flows over to the cap table, which you can see here the total amount needed. You can define some share value and the percentage <clears throat> of share shares that, of common, preferred A and B if relevant. If not, you can obviously do all, all common. And you can put the investment amount of each outside investor up to 20 slots in their share. Uh, fully diluted ownership values over here. Uh, and then we've also got insiders, any investments from them and their share. Uh, as well as fully diluted ownership value and the uh, cash flow analysis of each individual, as well as the aggregate of insiders and outsiders. Now, this does not have to be a joint venture. This could be 100% uh, owner funded or 100% debt funded and um, no, no equity coming in, and that's fine. These are all adjustable and editable. Next up on the global control is, so these investor and owner equity amounts are coming from the cap tables I just showed you. You got equity and debt calculations here. You can also define tax rates if you want to see the effect of taxes on taxable income. If not, you can zero those out. Uh, finally, there's some checks here. This is to show that, that each of the tabs, all the financial summaries and everything match up and these should always be zeros. Okay, let's talk about revenue assumptions. So you're doing a dry cleaning business, you gotta figure out some way to estimate how much money you might make. So here we have um, year one average customers per day and working days per year. So we're gonna build off of that and say, um, of those customers, what percentage are dry cleaning, a dry cleaning service? What percentage do add-ons like pressing? What percentage do stain removal? What percentage do garment delivery, special material cleaning? So we've got some, and these are, these are, you can change these names to whatever add-ons you plan on doing if you're going to do add-ons. And you could define the percentage of your total customers that get all these things done. And they're not mutually exclusive, so this does not have to add up to 100%. For example, somebody could get dry cleaning, they could also add in stain removal and garment delivery. Or they could do all, all of the above. 
the point is the logic is going to look at the total customers, multiply that by this percentage, and multiply this by the price to get the, um, and then multiply by the working days per year to get the year one revenue. It's also broken down into per day and per year count of services provided. So per day, if you've got 10 customers and 90% do a dry cleaning, that's nine dry cleaning services per, uh, units provided per day. Uh, pressing, if 25% of that is is done, then you got 2.5. And don't worry, decimals are completely fine with a financial forecast. If you had like 100 customers per day, we just multiplied everything by 10 essentially, the numbers will update. Uh, so you can define that to figure out what your revenues look like over time. You can also do your sales growth, which can, it, it's just going to essentially raise the average customers per day um, over time. So you can see here in year one, this matches this per day amount. But now we're going to grow in, at 10% for year two. So what that means is now we've got, well, instead of nine dry cleaning per day, we're doing 10 dry cleaning services per day and so on. And you can see this grows over time based on these rates you define here. So if I were to change all these, you can see all these numbers change. And what this is designed to do is say, okay, does it make sense realistically that I can do these amounts of services each day? And so that's that these assumption, this assumption check here is just to see, make sure if you're putting in numbers here, are they logical? Do they make sense for what a location can do and what the capacity is? Okay, so that's revenue. Uh, costs here, we have a couple things. So these are ongoing fixed costs. You can define the total annual cost of each of these items. The count, in it, for example, if you had like 20 workers and you wanted to put them all into here, you could just put worker type, count, annual cost, total cost. Uh, this is gonna flow into annual detail here, fixed costs, year one. And then it's just gonna grow after that based on the growth rate defined right here, as well as how many years you grow at. So you see here we're growing one, two, three, and then we're stabilized. So you can make that year 10 or go for 10 years. You could change the rate to whatever growth rate you think your expenses will grow at. Um, then we also, this is another new thing I added, which was variable costs. So you could define uh, for each of the different services you're providing, what's your all-in cost per unit of service provided. Now, by what I mean by all in is you're not counting equipment costs, you're not counting worker labor. All you're counting here would be direct like uh, soap, uh, detergent, um, anything that's got a useful life of less than one year that you have to use w um, to provide one unit of uh, each of these services. So that will then multiply by the times of services provided per year to get the variable cost of each of these in the annual detail right here in this section. So the whole model will drive off units provided per year. You multiply that by the price you're charging for each unit provided of service. That's your total revenue. Then you got variable costs, which are based on <clears throat> the county of services provided over time. And these can all grow over time based on what we just discussed. Then we've got a contribution margin after uh, you subtract the variable cost from the revenue. Then you've got fixed costs. These are just basically selling general and administrative costs. Then after that, you can get down to EBITDA, which is earnings before interest, tax, and depreciation, and amortization, which is just contribution margin less fixed costs. And now you have EBITDA. You've got all these other cash flow items, and then your cash flow. And this is what's used to determine the minimum equity requirement, the minimum cash position available in the, in the periods. Uh, so costs, CapEx, this is just going to do any equipment you're purchasing or anything that's depreciable, useful life, the cost basis, and that will flow through accordingly. The, the, row one's always for the building, so you can define the value of that s sale separately. Everything else is automat automatically calculating. Cap table we went over. Startup costs, these are just one-time expenses that happened before, or basically what you need um, to launch and these costs aren't, um, assuming they're not calculating anywhere else. Terminal value, this is just showing um, how your how the terminal value is uh, getting determined. Here's your final year EBITDA, the EBITDA multiple valuation and what's being applied to CapEx versus extraordinary income. That's only relevant for taxes. And then the sale of building will come in there to get your total exit value. That schedule is just a traditional amortization. 
annual detail we went over. Executive summary is just it's kind of like the annual detail, but cleaned up. Same same idea. You got return multiples here. Distributions is discounted cash flow analysis for the project as a whole. So here's IRR, discount rate, net present value of the project. And then here's the investor and owner individual um, pools. If there are, if there is a joint venture, if not, then whatever zeroed out won't have any values. We've also got the income statement. So this is a formal financial statement, revenue, variable cost, gross profit, EBITDA, interest, depreciation, and taxable income, net income. So a formal financial statement, we got a balance sheet, which is showing cash position over time, non-current assets, accumulated depreciation, total assets, liabilities, outside investor money, um, retained earnings, owner's equity, and then you've got assets equal liability plus owner's equity. And then finally, cash flow statement, you got operating activity cash flow, investing activity cash flow, financing activity cash flow. And so all these are all interconnected. Everything really drives off the assumptions with flow of the annual detail. And then um, cash flow statement, income statement kind of feed each other and then that feeds into the balance sheet. So a lot of logic happening here. All right, well that completes the overview of the model. Have fun, play with it. Um, it's really a, a full simulation and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one.